Good morning. Welcome. Good to have a few minutes together today. And, and I'm glad you took time to join us. And I just want to take a moment or two today and, and uh, say thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, you that are members of our church, what a blessing you've been uh, serving, working, investing. And I just can't even begin to say how thankful I am for all that, uh, that you've done, all that God has done through you. And uh, it's just a great thing to be a part of a, of a church. You know, our, our, I don't know, theme, whatever you want to call it, kind of our, um, I guess you'd say it's our um, mantra, whatever it might be, whatever terminology, but a church of active faith. Um, we're not a church of spectators. We don't sit around looking for someone to entertain us. We work at working and uh, finding jobs for people and, and everybody's got a purpose and, and there's a reason for everybody. I want to mention this weekend, um, we've got, of course, I've, I got a bulletin from, um, from Sunday, but we've got the, the, our, uh, angels and Dodgers competition going on this weekend is the, the last, um, the last of it. It's the end of the, uh, the competition. And, um, that'll be a fun Sunday night. Now Sunday morning is going to be great. So just let me run through, um, in case you weren't with us Sunday, let me run through the schedule a little different Friday night. We have a, just, we're going to sing and pray. And we're not going to sing a long time, but we'll sing five or 10, 15 minutes the most. Um, and then we'll divide up at seven o'clock Friday. Uh, we'll meet in our Spanish chapel just to sing. We're going to divide up into rooms, scatter around the property to pray and take time just to go to God on behalf of the lost in our community and those who are saved and out of church and people need the Lord. And so Friday night, singing and prayer. Saturday morning, of course, we'll have a big day going out, uh, inviting people to the service on Sunday. And then Saturday, um, after late afternoon, early evening, five o'clock, we're going to meet here to set up chairs for an outdoor service. Something that if you're not from our area, um, I've got, I got a picture from one of our members who moved east and they they've got snow or there. Well, there's no snow here. It's been in the eighties, high eighties this week. And, um, so Sunday morning, we're having a service that starts at 9.30 outdoors. So Saturday, we're setting up chairs and um, just going to fill the parking lot with chairs and and enjoy uh, some time together. Um, we'll, we'll set up the chairs, some tables, and then we're going to take time to pray on Saturday evening. And that'll probably, oh, the whole time might be an hour, hour and a half. It won't take long, especially if we get some help. Then Sunday morning, we're starting the service at uh, 9.30. So 9.30 Sunday morning, we'll meet together and uh, we're going to have breakfast being cooked and we're going to have all kinds of refreshments. All of our adult, uh, we have eight different adult Sunday school classes. They'll each bring their tables of refreshments down to join the uh, the gathering. So 9.30 to 10, fellowship, food. Um, we're going to have hopefully a bunch of turkeys and groceries to give away. And during that time, visitors will be able to... Um, um, get their names down and, and get their names in for drawings for some special gifts. But uh, we want to also be able to get turkeys and groceries to people. And perhaps you'd like to help us. You could bring a turkey to church, bring a bag of groceries, but you could also, if you're not sure, uh, in the church bulletin, there's been a list on the inside of the bulletin. Uh, there's a list here of things to bring. And um, I can't even read it. Uh, we've got young people on staff. Um, Canned gravy, cranberry sauce, green beans, instant potatoes, canned corn box stuffing, um, rice or beans, um, canned salsa, tortillas, things like that. Uh, but if you don't have time to get a bag together, if you'd like to just put $20 in either an online giving or in the offering on Wednesday, or come by and drop it off at the church or slip it under the door, you, you can just mark groceries, put $20 in, and that's about right now a turkey or a bag of groceries, small bag, or um, they're both going to hit a, the $20 range about there, depending on how careful shopping you are. So we're putting those in uh, and we're going to give away gift cards. If you're going to the store, you could buy a gift card to a grocery store and we'll give those away uh, also on Sunday morning. And uh, of course, those are most popular because you can buy just what you would want. But people are so gracious. We've been we've been doing these special Thanksgiving Sundays for years and and uh, people are very uh, gracious uh, and receptive. And even those who don't get things, you know, sometimes we run out and people are so kind. They see us giving away uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of items and they're good. But so Sunday morning, 
um, 9.30, breakfast, fellowship, food, 10 o'clock, the service will start outdoor. Spanish and English are going to meet together. And uh, Brother Valdez, our Spanish pastor, and I are going to team preach back and forth. And uh, and then around 10.30, oh, we'll uh, give, get groceries. We're going to take a group picture. Again, our, all the children from Sunday school will join us. And uh, then we've got some inflatables and things for the kids after uh, the service. And we're going to have some popcorn, hot dogs, and just some hang out and be together time. And so I want to encourage you to come. But if you would pray, ask God to, to uh, help us get to the right place, the right time, and that God would draw people and that people would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and that they would be um, open and that they'd come and that they'd hear the gospel and get saved. That's the main thing is we want people, of course, we want people to get saved. And, and, that, and that's vital. So anyway, if you want to look at a, a verse, I'm going to be in the book of Galatians and several other places um, and just take a few minutes today. And, and I may have a sermon along these lines, but I get so many, I, I either write or teach, preach anywhere from 13 to 25 messages a week. And, and some of them get into print and never get into a pulpit. And some get into this video or audio and they don't get into a pulpit. And so um, this truth may not get to a pulpit. I, I would like it to at some point, but I pray and ask God direction. So um, anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention um, in Galatians chapter uh, chapter six, and, and you know what? I love my family. I just want to say a word before I get to the scripture. God in his mercy, and I know everybody can't say this, I could not be more thankful for my family. Even my natural father that left when I was young, um, he, he was a dad and he, he taught, took time to teach us to fish, to hunt. It took time to, you know, if we had a bicycle, he'd work on it with us, a motorcycle, he'd work on it with us. He, he, uh, definitely was a hands-on father and, uh, he was home. I didn't take us to church, didn't read a Bible, but, but he did, uh, I don't think my brother or I, either one would ever say we doubted that we had a, a, a parents, mom and dad, of course, but, but that loved us. And, um, very grateful for that. I know a lot of you didn't have that. Uh, he left. We were a single mom home for a while. And even in those days, a little awkward, of course, my mom would leave early in the morning, sometimes get home evening, sometimes later evening. But, um, you know, those are junior high days for me, but I don't remember ever wondering if I was loved. I don't ever remember wondering if we were going to have food on the table. And now my mom might have worried about it. She drove a Corvair for a while where she, you know, you, some of you that know the old Corvairs, you go to the gas station and, and uh, full service in those days, people would come take care of you and you'd fill it up with oil and check the gas. And, and she had this old little Corvair, which today would be a classic and worth some money. In those days, it was a piece of junk. But um, um, I, I never worried. I had I'd always knew that I was loved and had a family that cared about me. And uh, then my mom remarried. Uh, she married um, just an amazing man that um, I got saved and the rest of the family um, along the way, we all got saved, put our faith in Christ, um, got reading our Bible, got active in church. And eventually everybody except my brother was in our church. Uh, he eventually got saved to go into a church up in the mountains above um, Phoenix in Arizona. How good God's been. And I understand everybody doesn't have that. But I want to talk this morning for a few minutes just about this matter of the of fellowship. Now, uh, last Wednesday, if you didn't hear my Wednesday Bible study, uh, my Bible study was on the the uh, the bond of peace and the unity of the beloved and and the things that God designs in and for the believer. There's something we're bone of His bones and flesh of His flesh. We're a part of His body. Um, like the husband and the wife are to be one flesh. That's an earthly picture of the spiritual thing. It just, uh, but that, um, that Bible study, um, is, is to me a very tender, very profound type of truth that we're, we're not hearing much. <clears throat> and, um, and I think we need to understand that, that there is something very sacred to God about the church and about the fellowship of the brethren, of the believers, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I want to look at those with you just a little bit this morning. So if you look at Galatians um, 6, chapter 6, verse 10, verse 9 and 10, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Um, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to all men. So he wants to be good to everybody, but he says especially 
to the household of faith. So that'll be good to everybody. But you know what? Those believers around you, they are a special group. They're a they're a, a group of people, very, very unique, very tender love, tender and beloved of God. And he said, be good to everybody, but all oh, be good to the child of God. Be good to the child of God. Now, I'll go over a couple of pages to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I know some of you, one of our, some of our folks listen to this while they're driving. And uh, don't look in your Bible while you're driving. Just listen and go back and write the verses down if you want. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9, but it's touching brotherly love. You need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. You know, if you're at all close to God, he's going to teach you to love the brethren. Now, this is not talking about blood brothers. This is not talking about mom and dad, brothers and sisters, parents and children love. This is that love, that bond of peace, that unity that comes to people who love the same God, who not just saved, but those who love God and love his church and love his book. And it's such a very precious thing. Hebrews chapter 13 gives us a similar uh, a similar uh, truth, principle, instruction. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and uh, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Um, just work at keeping that, that brotherly love together. Now, let it continue. Why is he talk? Why do they talk about it so much? Because sometimes Christian brethren can irritate you. But you know what? God wants us to love one another. God commands us to love one another. Over to Proverbs in the middle of your Bible, Psalms. Right after Psalms is Proverbs, and um, there's a, a principle in Proverbs that this is really where we're going. Um, and oh, people, uh, people in this culture that we're in today have a problem with this. But in Proverbs 27. Verse 10, Proverbs 27, verse 10, Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not. Neither go into thy brother's house in the day of thy calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Don't forsake your friend. Don't forsake your father's friend. And if you have a burden, a problem, don't go run and clear across the world to your brother's house. It's better to have a Christian brother, a friend, that's near, a neighbor, a Christian uh, child of God that's near than a brother that's far off. Now, he's not lowering um, how important brothers and sisters physically are, but, but you know, there's something special. The book of Amos says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, if you're the average Christian, um, you, you got saved, and, you, if, and, and if you're a growing Christian, I'll say that, not average. There's some people saved. The average Christian probably never opens their Bible. But if you're a growing Christian, you read your Bible, you go to church, there's a good chance you've been to family gathering or a gathering of people at work, and you are such a misfit. You just do not belong. And you don't know exactly where you fit or what you should do or not do. And, you know, they, everything they talk about is stuff that you don't care about. The things you care about, they don't talk about. And you care about your church, your Sunday school class, your bus route, your kids are learning this in Sunday school. Um, you care about the things of God, the Bible and answered prayer and the great need of our country or of our city or state or our families for God. And, and they're, you know, they'll talk about the World Series or the, the Super Bowl or they'll talk about the new Hollywood star and, and uh, who married who and, and, uh, and music and athletics and, 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 you know, they're not bad people. It's just, they're of the world. And, and if you got saved and you began growing, and if you're a growing Christian, you've been in those gatherings where you're the oddball. You just don't fit. Uh, you're the weird one. Well, the difference is you got a new father, you got a heavenly father, and you got a, you got a new family and you got a new book. And, um, and this is a very precious, precious thing. Uh, if you want to, so he says better is a, br a, a a friend or a neighbor that's near than a brother that's far off, philosophically far off. My brother and I were not close at all for many years. When he got saved, got reading his Bible, then our conversations, and, and he's very quiet. He's never been the, the most, I'm the baby of the family. I'm the big mouth, always talking. My second grade teacher said I'd be a preacher or a politician because I didn't shut up. Um, he being the oldest was more quiet. But we, we didn't talk a lot, nothing hostile between us. It just, our lives were in separate worlds. But then when he got saved, began reading his Bible and going to church and he, he helped his pastor start a church. And, 
and he saw some some meanness in the church and you know the church basically kicked the pastor out and he, he cared about this pastor and and I don't know all the details because he didn't spend a lot of time talking about it but but uh, he felt there was something that wasn't right and so he joined uh, later as the pastor decided to start a church he joined him and helped them what a what a neat thing to get together and, and so now my brother and I talked and we talked about how to do this and what to do that and I remember one holiday he and his wife were visiting and and we're talking over church polity or poli, not politics like right and wrong, but how do you do things and how should a church operate? It? And what a what a pleasure that my brother of blood now became my brother in Christ. And now you've got a double closeness there. You know that old colloquialism, blood sticker than water? It may be, but it doesn't make better relationships. It just doesn't. And it may be a rare case, but I, I remember hearing um, one time a, a family, um, they were saying, you know, I've got to back my child because they're my child. I've got to back them. And I think, I'm, I don't want to argue. It's none of my business what they do. But I remember thinking, no way. If my, if my child is Billy the kid, I'm not backing my child. If my brother is, my blood brother is Al Capone, I'm not condoning his behavior. Um, um, better to have a Christian brother, a brother or sister in Christ where you love the same book, love the same God, have the same values, the same morality, the same dreams, love the same church, even the same kind of church. And uh, there's a closeness there. L look over at Matthew. He talks about this. So look at Matthew 10. And, uh, and again, if you listen to this, maybe in a week, a month, a year, you'll hear this in a sermon. I don't know where this will, if or when this will get to the pulpit, but I wish we we understood more. See, this our our culture today is all messed up because everybody does everything on the base of feeling and how they feel. And uh, I'm I'm for this person because they just seem like they've they're they're hurting. Well, uh, if they're a drug addict on the street, um, okay, care about them, maybe buy them a meal or whatever. But but uh, the the gang member who's shooting people, burning down buildings, um, shooting cops, using vulgarities to cuss out the police. You know, you're not my friend. You're just not. If you're hungry, I'll probably find a way to get some food to you. If your car's broke down, you need a ride, I'll give you a ride. But you know, when you're in my car, you're not going to be cussing the cops. You're not going to be slandering God. Um, I don't have that kind of compassion. Um, that's where Amos 3.3, 3, I mentioned earlier, earlier, can two walk together except they be agreed. I can't be close to you if we don't agree, if we don't think alike. Um, we are um, wave and say hi friendly to our neighbors, five different houses, I think, yeah, five houses besides our, on our street, just a little cul-de-sac, and, and very gracious. And I, my wife and I have talked about having inviting several of these families over for dinner sometime just to, to get to know them a little bit. But we'd have to really prepare because we're just in different worlds. Everything we think about, everything we talk about, it's all about God. And, and we're such freaks. You know, they're not that. But, you know, if my, if my wife gave up on God and gave up on church and gave up on the Bible, I vowed to love her, honor her, and cherish her till death do us part. And, and I would do my best to do it. But our fellowship would be over. I would not give up on my Bible, my God, prayer, church, or church ministries because my wife did because I love somebody more than I love my wife. And if my children decide to give up on God, that's their decision. They're adults and they can make that call. But I'm not giving up on God. I'm not changing my church to make my kids happy and changing church to make my spouse happy. I have got a God and he gave his son to die for me. And he is preeminent that Christ Colossians says in all things might have the preeminence of Matthew chapter 10. And down at verse 35, it says this, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. And so Jesus says, look, when I come, when I come into your world, there's going to be some division. This idea of Jesus brings unity and brings everybody together. No, he doesn't. No, he, bring, he came to bring some division. He came to separate people. Uh, because you choose Christ, this world's going to hate you. And you choose to live holy, the unholy are going to un be unhappy about it because your holiness will reveal their unholiness. And, and you're witnessing to people as you walk down the street and they're going to think you're a freak and what are you doing? And we're, we just walk to a different beat and we're not better. We're, we just have different goals and a different agenda. Uh, go over a couple of pages to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 48. Uh, Matthew 12, 48. 
Um, in verse 46, 47, 48, Jesus is preaching to the people and somebody came to him and said, your, your family's outside. Verse 48, um, verse 47, I'm sorry. Then one said to him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. So yes, Jesus did have a mother, Mary. We all know that. He also had brothers and sisters. Uh, I think we can identify clearly four brothers. I'm not sure how many sisters, but certainly brothers and sisters. And as far as we know, the only one I could show you scripturally, but not time here, but the only one we know for sure got saved was James. And in the book of James starts out, James, uh, the brother, he talks about being the brother of the Lord and James, the servant of the Lord in the book of James. But in Hebrews, he talks about it in Peter, uh, James, the Lord's brother, the phrase, the only time I know of that that phrase is used. Jesus called us uh, friends, um, henceforth I call you not servants, but friends, but, but James is called the Lord's brother. And so Mary certainly had other children. But, um, but here in this story, they came to see him and Jesus is in a big crowd of people. And, and Jesus' response is very interesting there in verse 48. But he answered and said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. And so again, you see the family ties around around this book and the God of this book are more sacred even to Jesus than his relationship to his own mother. Um, the the people that, that gathered together that followed Jesus that that would would walk endless hours and and do without food to hear him preach. Jesus said, "There's my bro my brothers and sisters right there. This is my brothers and sisters." And my mother he even used that phrase. But those biological relatives, he was not being disrespectful toward them. Uh, at Calvary, on the cross, he said to John, he said, woman, didn't call her mother, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. He said, I want you to take care of her um, like she was your own mother. She, she certainly did follow Jesus um, and, and her, as far as we know, throughout her his ministry, but certainly toward the end of his ministry. And but where were the brothers and the physical brothers and sisters? Well, we don't know. But so Jesus committed Mary to to John, uh, because John, his love, beloved disciple. And so when you start thinking about the uh, the situation, um, if you look, go over to chapter um, chapter thirteen and verse fifty six, um, verse fifty five, fifty six, Matthew thirteen. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren, James, Joseph, Simeon, Simon, and Judas? So there's four brothers named. And his sisters, not named, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. So his brothers um, and his family there in Nazareth, perhaps that group, whoever it was he was around growing up, they were offended in him. And Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country. That would be the area around Galilee or Nazareth and his own house. That would be his brothers and sisters. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And so you might, you might feel a little awkward um, at a family gathering. The holidays are coming, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And to be honest, um, my natural father, because he never got saved as far as I know, um, we would go on occasion to their home. He got, he got remarried, had a couple of children, and, and uh, we were able to lead both his kids to Christ. And his, his uh, son has uh, passed away, but his, uh, his daughter is faithful in church up in Lancaster. And, and um, his widow is faithful to a church. She'd gotten saved along the way. But, you know, we'd go to their home, and, and it was just so difficult. And, and he tried. He, he was very good. You know, he'd, he'd, the TV's always on. You know how it is. You go to someone's home, the TV's on, maybe two TVs on. And uh, there's liquor here, and there's smoking here, and there's some vocabulary that's inappropriate. And the kids, oh, they've got a different value system. And, and they're not bad people. They're, they're just not, we're, we're the ones who changed. We're the ones who were born again into a new family. And um, it was just awkward. And, my, and my, this is my natural father. Now, he, he, he'd, be, he'd work at it. Uh, when my kids are there, he'd, he'd, the TV wouldn't go off, but he'd turn it to Animal Planet or something that seemed a little more wholesome. And, um, and he and his wife were so, they were very gracious, and, and my in-laws as well. Um, that's why we cannot relate to some of you who've had a, a difficult families, and my wife and I both have been so blessed. But, but still, 
there's no fellowship there. I remember one, one Thanksgiving, we were at my dad and my natural father and my stepmom's house and their kids. And so I had two or three kids at the time. I don't know who was born yet or who wasn't, but we were sitting there and, and Mike, we don't make a big deal, but we're not going to take time at a nice dinner and not thank God for it. And so uh, my kids just quietly bow their heads and thank God for the food. And so I go to bow my head and of course, let the kids take the lead. But uh, I don't know who did it first. But anyway, but it was kind of a, this is what we're going to do. And my and my dad said, well, why don't you just bless the food for all of us? And, and you know, if you're all going to pray anyway. And, and he was kind, but it was awkward. It was so awkward um, for them. And and I don't I don't want to make people feel awkward. Uh, you know, I didn't walk in and say, all right, if we're going to eat here, we're going to pray and thank God for the food, you bunch of heathen. No, that's not, that's no way to act. They don't know any better. And they, they're they not Bible reading, church going people. And, and you can't expect a fish to fly or a bird to swim, although some fish do fly and some birds do swim. But but um, um, we're, uh, we are the weird ones. And so with the holidays coming, perhaps there's going to be a little awkwardness. And, and I'll tell you, it's natural uh, be good to people, be kind, do your best to think of some things ahead of time to talk about. I do think you ought to be careful to guard your children um, because there's, you know, all the kids are going to go do whatever. Well, I don't know. You, know, you got to decide what you'll let your kids do and, and whatnot. Um, you got to make the decision. We were at someone's home, a, a, a relative, not a close relative. We were at a relative's home out of town and my oldest, uh, the one of the kids said, you want to come in to see my aquarium? And, um, went into the bedroom to see the aquarium. Well, I decided I wanted to see the aquarium. And I walked in and there were, there were pinup girls all around the wall. And, um, and I thought, you know what? And I, I just quietly told Josh, don't come back in here. And I think he would have known, but he was young. He was not a teenager yet for sure. He was a junior age, you know, third, fourth grade, whatever. And, uh, and I didn't say anything to the family. It's none of my business what's in their house. And these are people that we love. But you know, there's a love of the brethren. He said where we start in Galatians 6, be good to all men, but especially to the household of faith. And as my mom and and I, I got saved and left for college. And so, the, you know, my mom and my stepdad, my, my stepdad got saved. I, I don't know all the details was there, but it was at an Amway meeting. I think it was Zig Ziglar who spoke on a Sunday morning and he just had church. And I think that was when my dad trusted Christ. But my parents um, got so active in the church. My dad became just a the, the Bible reader, and um, of course my mom too, but it's not uncommon for moms and grandmas, but, the, but here's a grandpa, and um, helping with Sunday school or Wednesday night kids or choir or rest home, whatever. And, and uh, you know, the closeness of people who love God, it's something very sacred. And um, it is a special thing. And if you have a Christian family, all oh, be good to them. But I'll tell you, if I had to choose between my Christian friends and blood relatives, I'm choosing my Christian friends. We've got the same father. We've got the same home. We've got the same book. We've got the same church. We've got the same values. And my my other relatives, and, and again, even a Christian relative that got out of church and got away from God, I don't dislike him at all. But what are we going to talk about? Uh, what are we going to share? And, and fellowship, the very term fellowship is because we we share things. We are fellow citizens. We are on the same track. And and uh, uh, look, let me show you one more verse. Look over to Matthew 19. And um, and um, I'm going to close here. But in Matthew chapter 19, and um, Jesus and Peter, Jesus is talking to the disciples about people who gave things up for him. And verse 27, Peter said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee, what shall we have therefore? And he's talking about rewards. Peter's a man. What are we going to get out of this? And um, in verse 28 of Matthew 19, and Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the resur in the regeneration, to be regened, to be saved, the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, all right, that's the second coming when he sets up his earthly kingdom, Ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So that these apostles, they're going to be the judges overruling, overseeing Israel. Look at verse 29. And everyone, not just the 12 now, everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. 
And so the simple idea that Jesus said, there, there's going to be some of you, you're going to need to give up a relative because of me. And, and he didn't want you to be ashamed. Now, don't do it on purpose. Man, let's, let's love our family and, and be good to them. My aunt uh, was a Presbyterian and uh, they sprinkled of course, and they were, I think they were independent or free Presbyterian. They were a more conservative branch of Presbyterians. And many, many years ago, we were in our tent. We had a horse trough that we baptized in, and uh, it was up on a platform. It had a nice curtain around it, so you didn't see what it was. It, it was just an old horse trough, but it looked a little nicer than that. And stairs leading up to it, and um, people, we had baptism robes people put on. They just climbed the stairs, climb into the horse trough, sit down, and I'd baptize it. And we went out in the tent, my aunt and uncle and I, just walking around. And she got over to the baptistry and she said, oh, you're the ones that immerse. And like, isn't this quaint? And I wanted to say, we're the ones who do it the way Jesus did it. But, you know, these are my relatives. And, and they're, you know, it's my dad's sister. And um, it's not my business what they do in their church. And, and that's between them and God. You know, I'd like to say, oh, you're the ones that sprinkle like no one in the Bible did. But you know, that's no way to treat people. And, um, and we've, and I never responded. I just laughed and we talked and we visited, had a good visit. And, and uh, I'm grateful we could have some fellowship. And they talked about missionaries they support and Bible they read. And they're good people. Um, so I want to encourage you with holidays coming. I got my Thanksgiving banner uh, hanging in my office on the bookshelf just to remind us be thankful. Be thankful for your country. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful. And as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Um, and um, be good to all men, but especially the household of faith. And well, I hope you have a great, uh, great day. Pray for church on Sunday and pray for God's blessing. If you're, you attend another church or another area, pray, pray, support your church financially, support it with your time, your, your money, your prayers. Be good to the people of God. And if I had to choose, if you're, if you're a faithful part of a church preaching the Bible, loving the Bible, if you're a Bible reading soul winner, you love witnessing, you love the bus ministry and Sunday school and jail and rest stuff, that's you, you, just to tell you the truth, you're, I would rather be close to you than any relative that's not in church. I, I wouldn't dislike my relatives, but, but our fellowship is very, very sacred and it's a precious thing. Don't, don't, uh, don't hurt the people of God. Don't hurt anybody, especially uh, be good to the people of God. And they're who we're going to spend eternity with. And uh, it'd be, would it be bad to walk by somebody in the street and every time, streets of gold, and every time you see them, you remember, uh, you remember the meanness between you. Uh, I want to have, uh, I want to have a loving heart toward every one of God's children because we're going to live together and God wants his kids to be good to each other. Hope you have a great day.